Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be doing something with Nugent Stereoizer 3. So usually we see it as this, you know, mixing plugin, something you do sort of after the fact. But I like to toss these things into the middle of while I am composing because it sometimes helps clarify the vision or give me a cool creative direction to go in. So what I want to start with here is let's uh, let's not have it on quite yet. Uh, let's get down a basic chord progression going. And then we're going to slowly add elements to hopefully build towards something pretty cool. So let's just get started. I'm going to, I don't know, strings, piano, I'll come up with something. We'll cut right to it. All right. So I have a chord progression here that I like. I just noticed when I zoomed out here, this kind of looks like a face. Like there's the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. <laughs> Anyways, it sounds pretty cool. It's kind of long though, but just to give you a quick vibe, I'll play a little bit of it for you. So, you know, it, it goes on through. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's load up Stereoizer here. And all right, so first up, just at the beginning, I think it would be kind of cool if we had things be very narrow. And I'm going to go ahead and take the timing difference and make it a lot smaller. And then this one is the interaural intensity difference. We've done several videos on uh, this Stereoizer uh, because it's probably one of my most used plugins. So I really like it. Uh, we'll do the intensity difference up here in this like upper region here. Um, and what we're gonna do is I think it would be cool to have them open up over time. But for now, we'll start out very narrow. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. And what I wanna do is maybe drench it out in a little bit of verb, or you know what, this is what we could do. We could make it super dang wide. And let's go ahead, let's toss a verb on here. Okay, so I've got a verb on here and what we're gonna do is let's go in, browse parameters, find where these are so we can uh, automate this. So we're going to automate this and we'll browse parameters and we will look for this one as well. Okay, so now we've got them both automatable. They're both very wide at the at the beginning. And then we'll have them come down. I'd like it to match the cadence here. Uh, I'll keep this over here just so you can visually see what's happening. Maybe we'll have the width come down to something a little more. The intensity width, and then we'll have the timing width slowly go down to something a lot more just less, so we're constantly moving somewhere. <laughs> that looks kind of cool. Okay, so this is just layer one, right? It's just the beginning layer, things are getting going. I didn't even take time to do, um, you know, dynamics on any of this. They're all playing the same the same loudness. So I'd like to double this up with a uh, piano now. So let's just come in here, piano. We will copy this and paste it. And we will go for something like, I don't know, the giant maybe, uh, toss this on. Let's see how quickly we can get a good setting going, and then we'll get the riser on it. Here we go. So it's quite bright at the beginning here. We're going to make it a softer color. Um, we will leave the space and distance up. We'll go for a more far out there kind of thing, like the Taj Mahal, perhaps. Um, that might be it. Yeah, the rest might just be. Whoops, I want to click that. I wanted to click. Okay, so with that, oh man, even higher? Nope, 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 we'll keep it soft. Okay, so we'll make all these dynamics quite a bit softer, something like this maybe. I don't want it to be necessarily heard unless you're listening for it. It's just, it's just back there. And then I want to emphasize certain notes. So maybe actually these Bass notes are the things I'm kind of after. So I'll, I'll grab all of these and bring them all up just a hair higher. 
Okay, now with this, we need to send it to its own output so that it's on channel two. And this is called piano on the mixer. We'll call this piano as well. We'll add a stereoizer to this. And this one we're gonna keep wide. Let's just mess with a few of the other things that I don't often grab, unless I'm doing something kind of strange, like giving it this different spectral identity, or not spectral, I should say. I mean, it's kind of spectral, but different um, stereo position. Okay, um, I'm enjoying this. Let's go ahead, let's also grab a bell sound. Okay, so we've got a bell sound coming in here as well. We're going to add, of course, stereoizer. This one, I'm going to try a more narrow image and keep it more in the, uh, the upper end focus. Let's just change the resolution and uh, the acuity, why not? Just give it a little bit different of a, a space. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and add a synthetic element and have it open up over time. This may or may not work out, so I am really quick gonna do an experiment and just see how well this will go. Give me just a minute. Okay, I've got a sound here that's pretty ready to go. Uh, it's this little like smeared square wave. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another stereoizer to it. This time we're just gonna go everything sort of like we did on the first and we are going to create um, the same setup as before. We'll do that and then we'll do browse parameters. So that was the ITD, the IID, and we're going to do a similar thing, only we're gonna go out and on the first one, we'll reach a peak and then it'll fade back. And then right here, there'd be some sort of a transition and we're going to bring in a choir. I got a little carried away, but anyways, we're at the choir part. I added it in this bass drum just to give a little bit of a smooth transition. Probably gonna add a few other things here. Uh, and I am shaping the choir with stereoizer to fit in our current image. So yeah, we got this real nice mystic quality to it. Um, we got a lot of elements here now going. Well, not a ton, but you know, we've got some strings, a piano, a harp bell, choir, and a bass drum. Um, let me listen through and see if I want to add anything else real quick. Okay, so on the choir part, this is a move I sometimes like to do. So we've got this stereo imaging plugin on here, and it can be fun to remove it and just let it do the recording that was originally done, right? The stereo mic technique was used, it's going to be really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it start on here and I'm going to fade out the Sterilizer 3 in parallel here at the end. Now, my computer is occasionally complaining a little bit at me because I have the buffer size extraordinarily low, um, which is something I could change except for it would screw up the recording that I'm doing right now. So fortunately, I'm just going to kind of leave it where it's at. I am going to pump it up just a bit to eat some of this headroom. And let's just uh, let's just hear this thing now. Um, let's do a quick before and after. So 
Uh, let's come over here and we will turn off the effects on these ones. So this is essentially no stereoizer used. <laughs> Very cool, very nice. All right, now let's go, let's turn these on. This is with stereoizer being used. Very nice. So you can hear all the elements move around. You can tell where the different layers are just a little bit easier. Compositionally, it makes it more fun to add little bits in because you can sort of say, oh, I could add a little thing here or a little thing there. I might even come in with a couple spot instruments and occasionally have them join in for one or two riff, but then like shimmer them out with um, some stereo, stereoizer, some stereo imaging, delay and verb, and just have them in the background to for, sort of form an atmospheric pad. Some people just slap down a pad. Uh, you know, potato, potato, you just got to create some sort of a base here. And I think having the separate layers that are very deliberately inserted can be a lot more cool and interesting sounding, especially when you're moving them around. But anyways, that's Stereoizer. And one of the ways I like to use it, this is probably the more natural way it comes up for me. It either shows up in a mix at the end, or I'm doing stuff like this where I'm setting the image or gently moving the image around in order to just make things a little bit more clear to the ears. And I hope you've been listening over headphones. If you listen over your phone, this whole thing has probably been lost on you. Uh, but if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day. Thank you.